Hey guys, Bee Man Dan here with We Say Bees, and today I'm going to show you how we get the bees out of these vent holes without needing to cut anything. Alright, so this is what it looks like inside. You've got this sheet of honeycomb in front, and then there's one more in back, which means you probably have two or three more behind that last one. And based on the coloration of the honeycomb, this is like a really light yellow that tells me that this hive has been here about two to three potentially four weeks, which is kind of the cap of where we like to be able to run these trap outs. Anything longer than that gets a little bit tricky and results will definitely vary. So on these roofs, there's typically two different ways that bees get into primarily. One is through these vent holes and the other are through cracks on the fascia board like that, where larger than quarter inch bees can get into. Over here, you've got screen material, which is great, except um, this one obviously is missing one, but most homes have one quarter inch, which is big enough or small enough to keep the birds out, but not bees. They can definitely get through quarter inch. So the longer a hive has been there, the more resources they have, the more incentive they have to get back into the roof cavity. That's what makes the trap out really challenging because they're going to want to go into your house more than they're gonna to wanna to use the bait box. All right, so here's exactly how it works. That bee is gonna be coming out this nozzle <laughs> anytime now, but when she flies back, she's gonna be coming back here trying to get in, but she can't. And then there's a box here that smells like a beehive, has old honeycomb in there that's uh, attractive to the bees as well. So this is gonna be secondary for them. Um, they'll get the memo in a little bit. So we're basically doing a medieval siege on the bees. It sounds horrible, but we're gonna be starving them out. As soon as this cone goes on, no more incoming food comes back, which is the trigger for the bees to lay eggs. Right now, the average queen lays about 2,000 eggs per day. Uh, as soon as this cone goes on, no more incoming food says they stop that process. But it does take an egg about three weeks to go from um, their egg state to adult bee. And when the babies are born, they're gonna get hungry, so they start to consume the resources that have been collected already inside. That's the nectar, the pollen, some of the honey and at some point they realize that, hey, this is not a good situation, and they bail. And um, when they do, they'll find this box outside which has all the resources, and then it becomes business as usual. And then fast forward four to six weeks, the rest of the bees will have come out, including the queen, the babies will have been hatched, and most of the resources inside the roof, your roof, will have been consumed. What you do not want is dead organic material inside of there. That's the pollen, that's the bees, all that rots, molds, and without the bees to protect it, it becomes a buffet for other critters to want to come to the same area to say, hey, there's food, let's go in there. You're talking about uh, wasps, yellow jackets, flies, moths, cockroaches, are all the things that we've seen in killed beehives. There's a couple things to note while you're shopping for a service provider. One of the things is they're gonna say they can smoke the bees out, but see how you have this angle? Which means if they smoke the bees from the front, what ends up happening is they just chase the bees back further, and they say, hey, the bees are out, and then they just seal the bees and let them die inside. Second type of person is going to say they are going to sit here and vacuum the bees out, but um, that's not gonna happen. I don't know about you guys, but I don't. if you heard a vacuum, you don't run and dive into it. So they're gonna be sitting here for like an hour, sucking out the bees, but you're not gonna get through that network of honeycomb. So those guys are simply just gonna sit here, suck out these bees on the outside, and then say, hey, we're done, and then patch these up, and let's, let the rest of the bees die inside. And you still have all that organic material in there, which again, you do not want. Third type of guy is gonna take off this fascia board. These are nailed in through the side and through the top, which means this is gonna come off and it's gonna rip out. The second part to that is you don't have working at this angle. I can, I'm pretty nimble, but I can barely get my head up there and try to scrape and clean, which means they're not gonna get a good scrape out of there, so you're still left with honeycomb, and the problem doesn't really go away. And then the fourth guy you have is gonna be using something like this. This is called Bee Quick, or there's other stuff called Bee Gone, but this is what beekeepers use to facilitate the bees out of a box so that they can harvest honey. Uh, they're gonna call it some secret proprietary blend or magic sauce or whatever it is and won't tell you what it is, I'll tell you exactly what that is. It works, it's good. Uh, what they will not tell you is it screws up the bees' behavior completely, so they end up chasing the bees out, but they don't actually rescue them. They just chase them off to another yard. Uh, too much bee quick um, actually hurts the bees. I've used it on my skin on accident, 
it burns. So if they get this on the bees, they're basically hurting the bees and they're not going to tell you that. All right, so that covers the live removals and now we have the extermination, which we definitely don't do. But most extermination companies can't do second story because their insurance doesn't allow it. Their workers comp doesn't allow it. So they just send their technicians. They're going to come out here with a pole. They're going to squirt poison up in there and then leave it and walk away. No even seal it, nothing. Uh, and you're going to be charged 250 275 350 is not out of the question. We've also heard 450 and 550 for people who like super panicked about it. And then they have a three-year, uh, typically like a three-month warranty, which is as long as the chemicals last. Once the chemicals go away, guess what? Bees come back. Now you have to pay them again. Not to mention that you still have dead organic material upside your roof. One, rotting. Number two, that's attracting other pests to the area. And the worst part is, especially if they don't seal it, then other bees and stuff are going to come to this area, start to try to clean up the honey and the food resources. They get poisoned, and then they go back to where they're at, poison everything else. So they basically nuke the whole neighborhood just because of one killed beehive. All right, guys. All set. So the bees are coming out the nozzle, as expected. That was a big boy, by the way. And then here's a girl coming through. She's going to go out looking for food. <laughs> the boy is going out looking for, well, you know what. And then they're using the box so far, so that's great. I don't see a big massive clump, which is excellent. So part of the intangibles is I spent the last hour alone just sealing up these fascia boards, uh, re-screening these vent holes, just to make sure there's no way that bees can get back in in a 10-foot radius. And notice I'm climbing a ladder. My insurance says I can because we pay out the butt for it just to make sure that our guys are safe and our clients aren't compromised in case something happens to us on site. I'm liable, not you guys. And then here's the trap at its best. Good job, girls. All right, that's a wrap, guys. So, uh, hopefully this answers all the questions you may have had or potentially you never even knew to ask about bees inside your roof and this also applies to structural walls as well. If the bees have been here for more than a month this is a totally different conversation and I really don't recommend this method at all uh, simply because it's not really setting you up for long-term success or peace of mind of making sure that one bees don't get back in or you don't have leaky honey or whatever but if you have any further questions just reach out to us let us know we're happy to answer them for you thanks for visiting we'll see you in the next video